This morning, we're talking about the dangers of mislabeled food items after a 25-year-old woman died from anaphylactic shock in Connecticut. Lawyers claim she died after eating cookies, which had undeclared peanuts in them. Mm. An outside supplier says they notified the chain Stu Leonard's of an ingredient change, adding peanuts to the cookies, but that change was not reflected in the chain's repackaging. Our chief safety officer never was notified. We didn't change the label. Hence, we sold uh, you know, about 500 packages of these cookies over the holiday. The company says they followed all protocols, but advocacy groups are asking for stricter regulations on packaging to avoid more deaths. The woman's family says her death was 100% preventable. For sure, this morning we have Mike Laid. He is here with us. He is a parent whose child used to have uh, severe allergies. We were just talking about this, which led to him being a national ambassador for Food Allergy Research and Education, or FAIR. Good morning, thanks for being here with us. Good morning. So, I, and I know you are very, very passionate passionate about this, as you should be, I can imagine. How important is it for a parent to be involved in something like this, this organization, to uh, help others? Well, you, you have to be involved when it's a matter of life and death mm -hmm. for your child. Uh, so, I mean, it's just that simple. What, what protects you from a tragic situation uh, is vigilance. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with younger children, you have to continually educate them to advocate for themselves, but also educate those who are around them. Today, we're talking about in the U.S., one in 13 children, two kids in every single classroom that have a food allergy. And this is serious business, mm -hmm. um, life-threatening in many cases. What are your thoughts when you hear about this case as an allergy ambassador? Because this is not an isolated incident where something was mislabeled, right? No, this is not an isolated incident, and it's happening all too often. Um, there are laws that require proper labeling of allergens on food, mm -hmm. but where is the responsibility? I mean, in this case, it's tragic when you have someone who has died and the death was fully preventable. Mm -hmm. Who is responsible? You're reaching up to really uncomfortable subjects mm -hmm. like, okay, the person who's responsible for that, what's their consequence? Mm -hmm. Why is it that the patient and their family and loved ones are paying the ultimate price. Yeah. So we were just talking about this, the commonality of, uh, of, of food allergies. I'm allergic to fish, for example. How common are allergies? I mean, food, I mean, f excuse me, fish, peanuts, all of this, you get right. this quite often. Well, you can be allergic to any food. There are about 170 foods that we've identified, but really it's nine that are kind of the biggest sources of food allergy. It's milk, eggs, peanut, tree nut, mm -hmm. fish, shellfish, wheat, soy, and sesame. But what we tell everybody is, you know, in today's world, trying to understand that it's serious, this isn't a diet. Mm -hmm. This is a disease. Yeah. And this is a disease that affects 33 million people. It's not just kids. It's one in 13 kids, but it's one in 10 adults. When you start thinking about that kind of prevalence, how can you not... Be, take a greater mm -hmm. stance towards making sure that people can live safely mm -hmm. with their disease. Well, you brought in these EpiPens to give us an idea of, of what is going on. The, the young woman we mentioned in Connecticut who lost her life, her parents said she never left home without it. She always had it on her person. They tried to use it, but were told that her, her al allergic reaction was too strong for the dose. Mm. That, that sounds scary, first of all. What does that mean, and, then, and how do these make a difference most of the time to save lives? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the first line of defense is avoidance, of course, uh, and in this case that was not preventable because of the labeling issue. Mm -hmm. The line of defense that you have as a patient is to carry epinephrine uh, and to not be afraid to use it. I mm -hmm. can't speak to the specifics of this case of and course. I don't know them, mm -hmm. but what stands between those who have a reaction uh, and treat it with epinephrine and live versus those who don't is the early administration of epinephrine. Mm -hmm. So being vigilant to always have it on your person and being afraid to use it early mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. continuing to monitor to say, well, are my symptoms getting worse? Don't delay, administer the epinephrine because the mm -hmm. early administration really is the difference. How, how exactly do these work here really quickly? These are so simple and this is the real thing and this is a training device. It's as simple as twist to remove, pull off the safety cap, and then you're gonna go right into the thigh 
down. That's it. Hold for three seconds. Uh, as I used to tell the babysitters, my five-year-old can do it on himself. I am certain you can do oh, it. Yeah. yeah, and then you said there's even smaller ones too th yes. that are really easy for a guy to keep in his pocket. S same medication, different delivery devices, both known as epinephrine auto injectors. Mm -hmm. This is a smaller one. This one actually talks you through the steps, so it's gonna make a little noise when we pull it, but it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. And again, it's just a simple matter of against the leg and in. And then you've saved someone's life. And then life, you have, have made the difference between whether someone can survive that disease, that anaphylactic reaction, or not. That is powerful. Mike, right of time. Thank you so much for coming in and showing us. Always a pleasure. Thank Appreciate you. Your expertise.